The box needs funds. <clears throat> yeah, the box does need funds, but we don't need them that way. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, 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 I'm the most popular contributor. <laughs> At least you know it. Yeah, I'm I'm a mess and I know it. Yes, sir. We're working progress. Hey, if any of your girls want some page markers and stuff, I made them. And I got a little overzealous. So I got a bunch in my purse. I'll just like a few right now. Because it's like a page marker that just goes right in there. Look at that. You clever. Yeah, that, Sandy, that's, that's what you need. More stuff in your Bible. I, I can't with you. I can't with you. Yeah, Look, she has hundreds of. She, They're my favorite ones. And she, she like she, she keeps like last week. She'll put it in there. Pretty soon it's gonna be. Carol has a folder. Yeah. Like a folder, folder. I took all of them except for this one. It's like this thick. I'm like, we did well, all mine are, still, mine are still all separate. <laughs> I, go, <laughs> I said, Carol, did we do all those? Did yeah. we do all those? She goes, yes. Yeah. We did all those. So we have Carol's son crashed the vehicle. Grandson. Grandson. Grandson yeah. Good morning, Lynette. How are you? We're getting a slow start this morning. We'll give a couple minutes for everybody to jump on. Lynette says good morning. Somebody good morning. Who's texting me? <clears throat> is Carol still dealing with the? Do you know she's still dealing with the COVID, or is she? I think that? she's okay with that. Is she clear that? Yeah, now? I think so. Last I heard, she was doing a lot better. Okay. He said she's a mess. I don't know. She's a mess. She's just a mess with everyone in her life. Yeah. Now this happens to her. Yeah, we were just talking about this because the son wanted to borrow it. I told him, don't you dare. Don't let nobody give you a gun. Why do you mind? So she lends it to her grandson. Yeah. Like don't, don't do it. Mm -hmm. I look how long she waited just to get it back from being repaired. Remember? Yeah, a while. <coughs> Man, don't just leave. Take a photo. I don't think Pearl. <laughs> The baby to Good. I don't understand. I don't think they're coming. They just woke up. Well, they're not coming. <laughs> Everybody's a mess today. I'm not. We're here. Funny, you usually go with the crowd, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to learn. You're trying to learn. <laughs> it's all about change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. God. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we got everything's going on here. Um, so we are going to be doing a couple of different things. Um, we're going to have everybody uh, it, it, that wants a turn, which I would like everyone to do, uh, to read a couple of verses in, in the morning. All right. Um, I I picked Sandy to this week because she was around, and so. Uh, <laughs> You can do anything you want. Uh, I would like, if you want to do like a little something from a psalm would be nice, uh, but you can do anything you want. Uh, I think it's a good idea that we get used to like being in the Word. We go in there, we're looking at some verses, we're able to recite them in front of people. I think it's a good thing. So anyway, Sandy's going to read us a, a couple of lines this morning, and we're going to talk about that. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, God's timing, <laughs> what seems to be like our biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always hurry up and wait, and uh, it drives us crazy sometimes. It's like, you know, you're trying to leave to go somewhere, and you're waiting on somebody, and it gets a little frustrating. So <laughs> what do we do when it's God? Suck it up. <laughs> oh boy, everybody's in a mood today. All right. Hey, John. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, that, that, you know, I, I just thought this would be a good idea. So if you want to uh, take a turn, 
Uh, we'll take volunteers first, and if no one volunteers, I will pick someone. So we're gonna do we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. No. Good morning, Albert. How are you? Welcome to the craziness. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, and, and we're going to pray. We're going to do a little bit of John 16 this morning. Uh, so that'll be our reading for today. We're going to do the second half of that chapter. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what it means to be still. We're going to talk about what it means to wait. Um, Sandy's going to give us a couple of verses here, and we're going to talk about those. All right? How's everybody seeing you? Where are you? I don't see you. I'm on. What's going on? Oh, here it is. But no, that was live three years ago. You're not here. Uh, it should be. John, John's on. I Lynette's know. on. Uh, Albert's on. I was live three years ago. That's what I was calling. <laughs> That's not it. I don't understand. It's you. It's you. It's operator error. Oh, yeah. oh. All right, let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Come on, let's get let's pull it together today. Uh, uh, let's pull it together. Let, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time that we can come together, Lord, and teach us today what it means to wait on you, to have that peace in our heart and our trust and understanding that you are working even when we don't see it. So, Father, we pray that you would be with us here today. We reach out to all those that are in need of your touch this morning, whether it's a physical healing touch or a spiritual touch, Lord, that you would just be in a big way in our lives. We need you every single day. So, Lord, teach us to grow in you, to be close to you, to understand that you have the answers in which we've been searching for. As we open our hearts to you this morning, we would pray, Lord, that you would just be here, that you would minister to us, and this would be all about you. And it is in Christ's name that we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. All right. Miss Sandy, if I could impose upon you. Okay. Nice and loud. So I'm reading from 1 John, and it is 4, 18, and 19. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear... Fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Okay. So these verses speak of a couple of things. Another one, it speaks of the condition in which we come together in love and says that fear has no part in love. So if we, if we fear things, what does that say about us? Our love is not perfected. In other words, we don't trust the way we should. We don't think that God is able to do the things in which he promised us that he can do. And so what he's saying is that perfect love, or when we're in a good relationship with God, it casts out fear in the world, right? And the things that we go through. I'm able to go through situations without fearing because I know one thing. Remember what we read last week? Our Lord goes before us and with us and so i realize that and i understand that but how does that relate back to when we're trying to understand what it means about waiting and being calm and being patient what if your whole world is falling down around your ears or so you think and you want to out of this thing right it's gotten to be too much whatever that situation may be so <clears throat> let's read this. So I've been reading this uh, little thing, this devotional, and it speaks a lot about how God is speaking to us through his scripture, right? To be still, to be still, to, to let and know God is working. He says, thank me for the conditions that are requiring you to be still. Do not spoil these quiet hours by wishing them away, waiting impatiently to be active again. Some of the greatest works in my kingdom have been done from sick beds and prison cells. Instead of resenting the limitations of a weakened body, search for my way in the midst of these very circumstances. Limitations can be liberating when your strongest desire is living close 
to me. Quietness and trust enhance your awareness of my presence. Do not despise these simple ways of serving me. Although you feel cut off from the activity of the world, your quiet trust makes a powerful statement in spiritual realms. My strength and power show themselves most effective in weakness. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's the times that we think we don't hear God, when the times that are quiet, that are actually building our character, our faith, and our trust. But what happens when we don't feel that? What happens when there is quiet? What happens when we feel like I should be doing something? We get, we get frustrated with it, don't we? Exactly. I need to do something. When God says what? No, you need to listen. It's like when we do this here, right? We're in God's word. He's teaching us. He's grown us. We're in a setting here. What's happening? We're quiet. We're taking it in, right? It's the same way when we go through circumstances where God puts us in a place and he says, now, here, I need to work on you here. Sometimes we rebel against that, right? Yeah. So I want to take you through a couple of verses that speak about these things. The first one's going to be from Zechariah 2.13. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Wow. Isaiah 30.15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength but you were unwilling. God says, this is the way we rejuvenate. This is the way we get back to spiritual strength. This is what it means. <clears throat> and a lot of times, the, the one thing that we so desperately need, we reject because we don't feel that we're in it working <clears throat> for the conclusion of whatever that situation is. 2 Corinthians 12, 19. If you've ever... That's why I didn't have you read that. <laughs> If you've ever uh, read the Amplified Bible, it's very interesting. It will give you other words that describe some of the scripture that's coming forth. And this is, this is a little piece from uh, Amplified Bible. So uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says this, But he said to me, My grace, or my favor and loving kindness and mercy, is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, and enables you to bear the trouble. For my strength and power are made perfect, or fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glorify in my, or glory in my weakness and my infirmities, that the strength and power of Christ may rest upon you. Amen. You see what he's saying here? He's saying, listen, I'm enough. I can handle this. Trust in me. When things are quiet, no, I'm still working within that quiet time. But that's the one thing we may need is that peace and calmness of spirit at that moment. But what happens too often? Yeah, we take the control back. God said, I put you in this time for a reason to rejuvenate you, to bring you back to spiritual strength so that you may be able to deal with the, the, the daily situations that are coming upon you or the big things that are down the road. But instead of that, what do we, we get crazy, don't we? We got to keep moving. We got to get chaotic. Relax, relax. It's like if you're really, really tired, if you're overtired, what happens more times than not, you go to go to bed, you go to lay down, and what happens? You're wide awake. You're wide awake. Yeah, bing. Your eyes open. I can't sleep. I'm too overtired. That's what happens when life sometimes, when we get over frustrated with circumstances and things that are going on, when we should be resting, when we should be allowing things to play out, we're so wide awake and hyper uh, concentrated on that thing that we make it worse. That we make it worse. So life is a series of good things, <laughs> quiet away. times, busy times. But if you're just too heavy on one way or the other, what happens to us? I shut down. We get, we get out of whack. Yeah. We get out of balance. Mm -hmm. All right? And so I thought you guys might enjoy that because I've been dealing with a lot of this 
uh, lately this this timing thing where I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready. And, you know, and I'm like, we should be doing this. And, and the bottom line is always this. All the Old Testament saints that were waiting for blessings to come. Abraham this comes to mind. He's waiting for that child 25 years. He got so frustrated in waiting that he took matters into his own hands. Right? Oh, well, God's not going to give me the son. I'll make my own. And, and that was disastrous, wasn't it? And still we see repercussions today from that event. So when it's supposed to happen, it will happen. And the only thing I can say is if it's not coming, then you're not ready. And that's what I've been praying about. Lord. Like, Lord, make me ready for this. Right? Because if you're not ready, you're not, it's not coming. So I kind, of, I kind of feel okay about it. You know, it's like if it's supposed to happen, it will happen in God's time. But the waiting can be frustrating. It really can be. <laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> I'm heard. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Oh, Penny, <laughs> she missed type. Hi, Penny. Good morning. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn over to our reading for today. And we're going to see that... Uh, this is not something that only we deal with. Uh, the disciples were dealing with this too. Uh, we, we as humans, uh, we tend to struggle with these issues greatly. So if we go over to John chapter 16, uh, let's, let's pick it up in verse 16. He says, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. And some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he says a little while? And we know, and, and we do not know what he is saying. So if somebody says, I'll be there in a little while, For Jackie, that means a certain thing, and for me, that means a completely different thing. <laughs> a little while to me is maybe an hour within that time period. <laughs> Jackie, it means five minutes. <laughs> so everybody has their own. Everybody has that, their own understanding of this, right? Mm -hmm. So what the what these folks were saying, he's saying a little while, but what does that mean? So when God says. I'm going to I'm bringing you something in a little while. We have to say what does that mean? It's, it's, it's time. Yeah, it's time. So scripture tells us that a day is of a, as a thousand years and a thousand years is of a, of a day to the Lord. This does not help us. There's no help here. Right? Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. And and so what we want is what Gratification. Give me a time. Give me, give me, all right, a week. Okay, that's, that's good. We want that nailed down for us. When it's open-ended, what happens to us? We, we get frustrated. Yeah. And stop pacing. Yeah, you pacing. start pacing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it can, so it can cause... We start calling you, where are you? <laughs> yeah, so it'll cause spiritual, it'll cause spiritual issues also. Because then we, it, it affects our faith, it affects our trust, right? Oh, where's God? Right? Why is he, well, you know, Scripture tells us God is not slack. He does it in his own way, in his own time. We have to realize that, right? Isaiah 55, our thought, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So it, we try to figure it out, and it drives us nuts, but God says, in a little while. Mm. Or sometimes we get the answer. We just don't realize we have the answer. So, so if we pray, if, if we're praying for something and God's going to answer, it's going to be three, one of three answers, right? It's going to be yes, which we all want. Yeah. No, uh -huh. which none of us wants. And the one that really gets us is not right now. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes, no, or not yet. <laughs> yep. What do you always you know, and, and, and that's the whole thing. It's like time gives us 
an understanding of God moving in our lives. Because when we look back on those years and we go, oh, I see what he was doing there. Yeah. But now when you're right in the middle of it and you're like, okay, let's, let's, let's go. I know you're right? yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> and, uh, I need it now. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, really now. <laughs> it's interesting. So what I want to tell you is this whole process that Jesus is leading them through was a step-by-step -step thing that was ultimately going to be a, a, an amazing event for humankind as a whole. And so in John 19, verse 40, it says, Then they took the body of Jesus, they bound it in strips of linen and with spices, as the custom was of the Jews, to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden, a new tomb in which no one had been laid, so they laid <laughs> Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. So what happened was that the Passover celebration was coming. On Thursday night, Jesus and his disciples actually celebrated that Passover ahead of time. That's where he instituted communion. Later on that night, he was taken into custody. They held the, 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 the kangaroo trial in the middle of the night, yeah, right? right? He's, he's crucified on Friday. Everything has to be done before 6 o'clock on Friday because then it becomes the Sabbath day and, the day, of, and the, the, uh, the day of Passover was there and no work could be done on the Sabbath day. So all this stuff had to be done. That's why you see that timeline. So everything that was leading up to that when Jesus is preparing his disciples, he's saying, this is going to happen. This is going to happen and that's going to happen. He didn't give them a time, but he said, when you see these pieces in place. So what we can glean from this is this. When we see the pieces starting to fall into place, we know something is coming. We know something is changing. And I believe there are some things that are happening right now where things are falling into place, and we're going to see some change. Let's go over to John 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews Jesus came and he stood in the in their midst and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord remember what Jesus said a little while you will not see me buried in the tomb and in a little while, you will see me resurrected. You see what he's saying here? That's what he was trying to explain to them. The fulfillment of the promise must not be limited to one event, as the resurrection or the Pentecost or the return. The beginning of the new vision was at the resurrection. The potential fulfillment of it was at, uh, was at Pentecost, and the spiritual presence of the Lord was completed by the gift of the Holy Spirit. This presence, slowly realized, will be crowned by the return. All right. Day of Pentecost means what? Day of reckoning. Anybody know? If you're an Old Testament believer, Day of Pentecost is... Hey, hey, hey! If you're an Old Testament believer, the day of Pentecost is the giving of the law, when Moses brought the law. If you're a New Testament believer, the day of Pentecost is the giving of the Spirit, right? That we see in Acts, where it came upon them. Understand this. It's, excuse me. All right. Sorry, guys. How you doing? Penalty box. 
penalty box. <laughs> Lou's got this box thing. Lou's happy when anybody else gets the box. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, Louie? Two minutes for instigating. Yes. <laughs> I'm always okay. All right, we, we have a couple of people coming in. You remember, guys, remember Fred? Yes. Hi, Fred. And this is, uh, again, your name, Aisa? Isela. Isela. All right, I will get that. Probably not, but I will try. Wow. Did you guys bring eggs too? Oh, was that a sneak there, Okay. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Okay, so what we're talking about here is we're talking about, uh, we're in John chapter 16, right? And we're talking about what Jesus is uh, saying to them about a little while you will see me, a little while you won't see me, and, and, and how this relates. And we were discussing about how frustrating it is for sometimes when we're in that period or time of quietness or time of waiting and it can it it can be because we doesn't god know i'm going through this you know I, this needs to change the stress right or the un, just the the not knowing how this is going to work out is it can be overwhelming for us sometimes Think about what was happening here to the disciples. Their whole world is crumbling, right? Finally, the Messiah comes. Finally, things are happening. And he keeps telling them, things are going to get crazy. Is that the way life is? Do, do things always get crazy before they get better? Oh, yeah. What if we're, what if, so we're, we're supposed to be walking one path and we start walking another does correction come easy? No. <laughs> no. Is, is correction painless? No. What if we keep what if we keep fighting to keep our wheels on the wrong path? Right, it's hard. That'll work. You keep fighting, you're gonna end up on the wrong path. Well, isn't God trying to tell us? Yeah, he's trying, but if you don't listen. So when we're supposed to be quiet, if we're not waiting on the Lord to, to put these things in place and to make these things happen, what are we what what are we doing? Are we fighting with him or against him? Yeah. We need to remain humble. Patient. But how e how easy is it to say everything's falling apart and I need you to help me, Lord? But what if the help is you need to trust me. Pride cometh before the fall. Pride cometh before the fall. So mm -hmm. if it becomes about us, and it becomes about what we want, instead of what the Lord wants for us, we get nothing. <laughs> we get nothing. Get nothing. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that, and, and you, we all right now we're all scanning our past life. And we're going, oh, I saw that. That's where I was. I did I that, and this didn't end well. And this didn't end well. All right, let's go back into our verses here. We're in verse 19 of John chapter 16. He says, And now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him. And he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Many times when somebody... At, is laying something out and we want to ask a question we do what do we ask them the question or we start whispering to the person that's next to us hey what do you think that means <laughs> well here god is trying to give them some understanding and instead of asking him the question what do they say they're asking each other does that work no. so if god is asking he wants you to ask him questions right he says, come to me. We, learn, we need to learn to go to God. If we keep going to each other, then what happens? What if we're getting the wrong information? Yeah. Then we're going backwards. 
we're going backwards. What if we're getting frustrated because it's not working out and God is telling us the whole time, you're supposed to trust me. You're supposed to come to me. I'm your spiritual strength. Listen, fellow believers are great. Spiritual leaders are fantastic. But they're not God. No. And so I always tell you guys, remember two things in life. Number one, there is only one God. And number two, you're not him. <laughs> you're not him. And we need to understand that. Right? Because we can try to struggle through under our own power. And it's gonna it's not gonna work well, I promise you. Right, Pearl? It's not gonna work work well. All right. Verse 20. He says, Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Remember what we're talking about. In a little while you will not see me, in a little while you will see me. He's trying to explain to them about, I'm going to the cross, I'm going to the grave, then I'll be resurrected. A little while you will not see me, and then you will see me, but your joy is going to be made full because this is changing everything. So what is he trying to tell them? A little pain, a little sorrow will do its work. Remember what Sandy talked about when she was reading those verses. Perfect love casts out fear. What is, what is he trying to show them? My love can overcome anything. You don't have anything to fear here. You, you will have trouble. You will have sorrow. You will have difficulty. But I will turn it into joy. And so that's what we need to do. Just listen, we're going to struggle. Things aren't going to work out the way we want them always to work out. It just isn't going to happen. But you know what they are going to do? They're going to work out exactly the way God wants them. Exactly. And that's what he means by perfect love casts out fear. You have nothing to fear. You know why? Because God's got this. And he's going to make it what it was intended to be. What your life or your circumstances or whatever is happening with you, right? Whether it's good, better, or indifferent. Listen, you have two choices in life. You can go kicking and screaming. Or you can go in trusting and in faith and in love. But there's one thing you have to realize. You're going to go. God says this is the way it's going to be. You can fight the whole way, or you can willingly you know, say, all right, Lord, this is, this is your will for me in my life, and so I, I will bend myself to that. Right? In the same way Jesus said, it's not my will, but it's the will of the Father that has to be done. Right? Verse 21. He gives us this analogy here. All right? And, and you ladies can really relate to this. So a woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, 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 give, I, give, I give women all the props because I'll tell you one thing. If it was up to men to birth babies, there would be none. There would be not a one. So God has given, given and made you very special in that way. Anyone? I'll never do this again. Right. Anybody, and that's another thing. That's another thing we realize is like when you go through that, and you and because you're there as men, we see it all. And then the woman's after it's over, and they go, "Oh, I'll do that again." And you're like, "What? What?" And then we get to blame you again. And then we get to blame you. You did this to me. Yes. I hate you. I hate you. Don't yeah. touch me ever again. Pain's got pain's got a way of doing that to us, doesn't it? Oh. And so, what happens in our life? In our life struggle, we go through a bunch of pain. We go through a bunch of difficulty, a bunch of sorrow. We can get jaded, or we can build in our faith and trust. That's what happens. But when we go through it, we're like, "All right, Lord, you grew me so much in this thing." Bring it on. Let's do it again. That's, that's what women say, right? They have birth. Oh, we can do that. I can do this again. That's what 
building our spiritual character and strength is all about. Uh, verse 22. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I, but, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will be able to take from you. Listen, when God speaks into your life, when God blesses your spirit and soul, when God is there for you and grows you, no one can take that from you. Absolutely not. What, is, what does Romans tell us? God's promises are irrevocable. That's right. No one can take them from you when he gives them. Wow. So stop worrying about and stop inquiring to each other and take it to God. Verse 23. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. I think it's going to be interesting when we stand before the throne and we see the Lamb as though he was slain on that day. I don't even know if we're going to be able to speak at that moment. We're going to be so overwhelmed by the love that God has shown us and given us, especially on the cross, that it, it, there's going to be nothing for us to say. There's going to be nothing for us to say. See what Jesus is doing yeah. is beyond my, my comprehension. Yes, verse 24. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. This is an interesting verse because we see this a couple places. So I've been praying, I've been asking the Lord, and I've been asking in Jesus' name, and it's still not happening. Where's my Powerball? Yeah. Right? <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people pray for that. <laughs> all my all my issues would go away with just some money. Is that true? No. 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 Is that true? It'll help. But it doesn't solve it. What if? What if? God gives you that thing. If God gives you that thing and you destroy yourself with it. I would say sometimes it makes it worse. Do you think God is going to do that? No. He's going to give you something that you're going to destroy yourself with if you're his? Absolutely not. He's going to do everything he can to keep keep it away from you. If you're putting your faith in material things, then you have missed the boat. You have missed the whole... Listen, do we need money? Absolutely. We all do. It, it is a part of our life. But if that's your focus, instead of your focus being on the Lord and trusting in Him, right? Because that's what He's trying to do, make us dependent upon Him, having faith and trust in Him. If it means He has to take everything from you for you to trust Him, guess what's going to happen? Yes. I had a guy one time in the, in the I had a guy one time in the jail yes. ministry. I know it first I had a guy in the jail ministry and he, he came up to me and he said this. He said, The only time I feel close to the Lord is when I'm in jail. And I said, Don't say that. And he said, Why? And I said, Because of one thing. Your Lord is jealous for you. He wants a relationship with you. And if the only place he can have that relationship with you is putting you in jail. Guess where you're going to go? Yeah. Love looks funny sometimes in our eyes, but in God's eyes, he's like, I, I, we need to be connected. And wherever that can happen, that's where I'm going to put you. And if all this material stuff is keeping you from me, I will take it from you because I want you. Because I want you. So make sure that our priorities are lined up with God's priorities or his will, right? God gives us things for what? Oh, sorry. To further the kingdom. That's our whole purpose. Go out into the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and preach the gospel everywhere. So our purpose should always be to further the kingdom, spread the gospel, do what we can. Lift people up. Yeah, that's part of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, verse, we are in verse 22? Yes, sir. No, 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 I'm sorry. Verse 23. And that day, and in that day, you will ask me nothing, and most surely I say to you that whatever you ask in the Father's name, he will give to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you, 
in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. Interesting. He's trying to get them, get them through to this whole understanding. That's why we see many times in Scripture it talks about different things, but they mean a spiritual thing. Uh, your faith is like a mustard seed. It, it, it starts out small, but it needs to grow. It needs to be tended to. You guys who are, who are gardeners here, Sandy, gave me a beautiful tomato out of her garden. Uh, so those plants don't just go by themselves, do they? They need to be tended, right? you got to give them what they need in order for them to bear fruit. If you're, you're dealing with animals, right? We know that because I was over at the farm the other day and it was incredible. They know exactly when it's feeding time. And they make a lot of noise when they, want to, when they want to eat. But it needs to be tended to, right? They need water. They need food. They need companionship. Right? All those things are necessary in order for us to prosper. So if we're in a spiritual funk, or we're not getting what we need to prosper, what's going to happen to us? If you don't feed your animals, you're you, to if you don't water your plants, they're going to grow. And eventually, what's going to happen? Yeah. So if we're not feeding ourselves spiritually, and by bending our will to the Father's will, walking the path in which He's called us to walk, being there for one another because we need to, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what he calls us to do. Bear with each other's burdens. Galatians, bear with each other's burdens. So the law of Christ is fulfilled, right? Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. He's appointed good works ahead of time that we should walk in them. So it's not about us. It's about us, right? It's about us, and we need to realize that. These things I've spoken to you in a figurative language, but now I'm telling you plainly. Verse 26. That in the day you will ask my name in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray to the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. God answers our prayers because of what? We have learned to love God. Perfect love. Think about it. That's what he wants us to get to. So when we truly love God, what, is, what, what happens to the things that we pray for? They do, they, come do they change? Yes. They, they do change. They, they change do. dramatically because we go from a place of physical want to a place of spiritual need. Father, fill me. Allow me to speak your word the way that I should. I pray this every night before I go into the jail ministry. Lord, let me be bold for you. Let me speak truth, your truth. Because that's what people need. This, this stuff of give them what they want to hear. Does that do any good? No. Does it do damage? It could. We can see the damage inside. It could. It is. It does a lot of damage. Because if people think what's happening, they're okay. You're okay. God loves you. I won't, I won't mention any names. There's, there's a lot of people, a lot of preachers out there, they only give fluff, right? God loves you, he'll forgive you, he'll be there for you. Is that true? Yes. But God also says that there's things in your life that need to be removed. He also says that there's accountability when you don't. He also says, right, that when we walk against him, he will walk against us. Absolutely. That's a scary place sometimes. That's, that's a, a real place. That's a scary place. Keep that up front. <laughs> when we love him, right? Verse 28, I came both from the Father and have come into the world again. I will leave the world and go to the Father. What he's telling them is this. All these things need to happen. There's a time, there's a place, and it will happen in succession. And I told you guys before, when we see the pieces starting to come together, we know God is doing something, right? Mm -hmm. Because before there was nothing happening. <clears throat> but now we see that there's a little light at the end of the tunnel. Things are starting to slowly change. God is working within that situation. We need to lean into that then, right? I don't care what the situation is. Could be is, could be a substance <clears throat> situation you have. Could be a lack of forgiveness. 
could be a lack of love for someone close to you. All those things, God is working within your circumstance to bring you to full understanding and to change that thing that you have in your heart. Because that's what hurts us. It's the hardness within our heart and not being able to love someone in a most difficult situation. Because, listen, it's easy to love the, the, the people that are easy to love, right? Yeah. Everybody loves Sandy. Sandy's easy to love. She's happy all the time, bubbly, right? But what about somebody that's always down? Somebody that's always glum, right? They're bringing the negative energy into the bubble. Those are hard people to love, aren't they? Yeah. And what did Jesus say about that? One more. What benefit is it yeah. that if you just love the people that love you? What benefit is it? Love your enemy. So then why can't we love the people that are next to us? And I'm guilty as the rest of you guys about this. I'm, I can be harsh. Believe it or not, I can be harsh. Oh, yeah. Sometimes my, the one's close my wife, to the one My wife, she gets mad. She doesn't throw eggs at me. She throws rocks. So. I do not. <laughs> I don't say nothing. So let's let's talk about this in a way we can understand this. All right? Let's go over to Matthew 25. Now, what's happening here is God gives gifts, right? And he says, I want, I'm going to give you this, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. It's on your sheet, Fred. Matthew 25. So whatever this thing that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you this gift. I expect you to do something with this. Okay, I don't care. It, it, it's your, your attitude, your resources in any way, shape, or form, uh, your time, uh, even the way that you look at life in general, where your view, your focus. So he gives these gifts to these men, right? We're going to pick it up in verse 22. <clears throat> he also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. God does not ask us to do everything. But what he does say is be faithful over the things I have given you. Be faithful in the few things I have given you and your reward will be great. What if we don't use them? What? Huh? It's wasted. It's wasted. Let's move on to the next guy. He gave him one talent, right? Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look there, you have what is yours. Interesting. God gives you something. You're afraid to use it. You're, what does that mean? First of all, does, does this man know the Lord? No. no. Look what he says. Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Is that our Lord? No. I was afraid of you. What, what the verses that we talked about that perfect love casts out all fear. So when we know who God truly is, there's no reason to be afraid. This man did not know the Lord. He did not know the Lord. However, God still gives gifts, does he not? Yes. He still gives gifts. Let's hear what the Lord said to him. But the Lord answered and said to him, "You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own plus interest. So take that talent from him and give it to him who has ten. Wicked and lazy servant. You didn't even try. God doesn't care if we fail. Well, you know what he does care? We, we don't even try. So he never, um, he never tried. Right. And um, he just tells, he, he didn't think that 
the uh, he, minister what, was coming back. What's he? Do, yeah, what's he doing before the Lord? He's making excuses. He's just sitting there making stuff up as he's going along because it's not the true. Right? What he's saying is not truly who the Lord is. But in his mind, that's who he was. Right? It's just a way to make excuses so we don't do. Listen, God will ask you to do some hard things. Mm -hmm. There's just no way of getting around it. He's going to ask you to make some sacrifices and to, and to trust and to go out on a limb for him. That's the way you grow. If not, you never change. Like you said, suck it up, buddy. Yes. <laughs> In a way. Keep moving. In a way. So I, I just look at it like this. It's like, you know, I never stop trying. You guys know me. I'm like the little ever-ready bunny. Uh, I just, sooner or later, the Lord's going to make it happen, you know? So it's, it's giving up. That's the real failure in life. Not trying. Just giving it up. All right, let's go on. We're in verse 29. His disciples said to him, See now, you are speaking plainly and using no figurative language. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. By this, we believe that you came forth from God. Listen, does it work well when we start questioning God? No. Uh, Job tried to do that, didn't he? Job tried to question the Lord. What's going on here? What? <laughs> My life is a shambles. It's a mere shadow of what it once was. What's happening here, Lord? I think you're doing this wrong. Remember what the Lord said to Job? Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the world? Where were you when I created the universe? Who can draw a line across there but me? So listen, you're bad at doing God's job. So stop trying to do it. Stop trying to do it. Your place, remember what we talked about last week. He will, the Spirit will convict in righteousness. Take your rightful place. Be comfortable in that. Have some peace and some quiet and some joy in your life over it. Because you will prosper in that place. But if you're just always fighting and scrapping, especially against God, you know, that's not what I want. You're like that petulant child in Walmart down the <laughs> toy aisle, right? That the mom says you can't have the toy, and they're kicking and screaming on the ground. And what do you look at? You look at them and go, oh, somebody needs a, <laughs> a little pow-pow. <laughs> so why do, we, why do we question God when we're that child, and he says, somebody needs some discipline. <laughs> But we're unwilling to accept it. We're unwilling to accept it. It's then interesting. Then you're willing to accept, uh, accept what will come. Listen, if you, if you believe judgment isn't coming, does that mean judgment doesn't come? If you believe that there's no consequences for your action, does that mean act, those consequences don't come? I don't, believe in, I don't believe in speed limits. Therefore, I'm going to drive as fast as I want, wherever I want, and it doesn't matter because I don't, I don't recognize that. I don't recognize that. I like to beat the time on the GPS. And how's... <laughs> Louis, there are a great many things that are not suggestions. All right, let's go back into our verses here. Verse 31. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and now has come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yes, I am not alone because the Father is with me. How many times have we got to read this in John before we get it? What is Jesus always saying? He's saying, I'm not alone because why? The Father is with me. Was Jesus ever alone? <laughs> no. Can you ever separate any no. portion of the God's no. head? No. It's impossible, right? How many times do we see this? Look what he says. I'm never alone. The Father is always with me. Because if, if that union could be broken, if that perfect relationship between God the Father and God the Son, God the Spirit could be broken, then what chance do we have? None. See, he is God. Therefore, that cannot be broken. Therefore, that gives us hope and trust and faith 
that when he does bring us into that, right, and that's what he promises. We're going to read about that next week in John 17. It's a whole, it's a prayer from God the Son to God the Father, and we're going to see a whole lot of things in there that that cannot be broken. Jesus says, no one can take you from my hands. No one can take you from my hands. And we need to believe that. Verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In me you will have peace. So let's say we're going through something and we have no peace. What have we forgotten? Turn to God, Jesus. We forgot Jesus. Yeah. It's like the men when, that we read about when they were going in the boat. Their fatal mistake was what? Leaving the shore without Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And remember, the wind came up mm -hmm. and the storm started. Yeah. And, and the only thing they had was what? Their oars. Mm -hmm. They were rowing. They weren't getting anywhere, and they were getting tired, right? But the only thing they had was rowing. So you know what they did? They rowed. Jesus shows up on the scene. What's the first thing he says? Peace, quiet, calm. I got this. Their fatal mistake was leaving without him. And they're not realizing that what they were doing was futile. <laughs> right? That's our life sometimes. We row yeah. against the wind. And we continue to row because we don't trust God enough to give him what we're carrying. You were never made to carry that weight. Stop it. Give it to him. Ephesians 2.14 tells us this. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. What he's talking about is this. At that time, if you were Jewish, there was salvation. If you were not, there was no salvation. So Jesus came and he broke down that separation, right? That's what he's talking about. I'm going to ask you to look at this verse a little differently after I read it. Well, let's read it through. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, and thus making peace. Hmm. What a beautiful thought. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Amen. Ephesians is a wonderful book for spiritual understanding and depth. So, let's look a little closer at this verse, where he talks about he has broken down that wall of separation, and he has made peace. Think about it like this, you yourself. Paul explains to us that there is a spiritual body, and there is a physical body, right? Right? We see that in Galatians. It's clear. So if we were to, let's say, identify these two within us as animals, let's say, right? Which one you feed mm -hmm. is going to be the one that gets stronger, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're constantly feeding the spirit, which one is going to be dominant in your life? The spirit. The spirit. If you're feeding the flesh constantly, which one is going to be dominant in your life? The flesh. What if you feed one and then the other? Sunday I go to church, Monday I get drunk. You fed the spirit, you fed the, you, you fed the flesh. What do you think is going to be happening within you? They're, right, they're going to be battling for control, right? So, so let's, let's look at this verse in that context, within personal understanding, right? Where he says this. He says that he wiped out the law of commandments contained in the ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two and thus making peace that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. 
if we're ever going to have peace in our life, we have to let God do the work that was intended on the cross within us personally and make peace between the flesh and the spirit, which is only one way. The spirit has to dominate because the flesh will drive us crazy. It will lead us places we should not go. It will make us do things that we, it's like you, right? You ever drink too much one night, you get up the next day and you get the call and they say, man, you won't believe. I can't believe what you did last night. And you're like, what? <laughs> what I do? Right? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I don't think I ever had anybody call me and tell me what I did. So I don't know if that was good or not. All right. <laughs> you know from this week, Kitchen Kings and House and stuff, that yeah. I, have, I thought I had been struggling with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And after today, you make it look so small. <laughs> yeah, I really do, you know, because I, I have been struggling against the flesh I, yeah. and, and just really thinking that, why me, Lord, why right. me? And I even told Pastor that I pulled over in the middle of a parking lot and just literally screamed. It was okay. Yeah. And I said, why, God, why has this happened mm -hmm. to me? And, and that I had rebuked the devil from me yeah. because I just was really overwhelmed. But yeah. after today, what you what you said, mm -hmm. I heard God speak to me and say, Amen. you know, yeah. everything is going to be okay. Yes, of course and, it's going to be. And, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I really appreciate yes, good. the message today because awesome. I really heard God through it. Good. Yeah. Listen, the, you know, work? understand what we all we all struggle. We yeah. all go through so crazy so. stuff. And but you know what? There's one thing we can do. We can go through it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can go through it together, and the Lord will speak to you. I promise you. He will answer. Ask Him the questions. Go to Him. Go to Him, and you you may not like what He says or the the answer He's giving you, but that's what we need to hear, right? What does He always tell us? I will give you what you need. He doesn't always give us what we want. He gives us what we need, and that's an important part. All right. Well, today I'm going to have to end in prayer because uh, John's not here. We're going to miss him greatly. Love you, John. But anyway, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will go ahead and... All right, we can do that. We can go ahead and dive Put right in. Yes. Father, we do thank you so much for the time that we spent with you and each other, knowing that you have touched our heart and that your spirit has spoke truth when we so desperately needed to hear it. May we rest in the fact of knowing that when you call us to be quiet, you're trying to speak to us. And that all the chaos and noise around us should go away. And it should be always about you. Father, we know that you love us. And there is no fear within your perfect love. And that peace should, that, that should live in our lives always through what was done for us on the cross by our Lord Jesus. So, Father, be with us in this time. I pray for all those that are struggling in whatever situation they are, that they would come to you. That they have, would have peace with it and know that your will is being done. And Lord, whatever we can do to further that. So Father, we thank you again for this time. It is precious to us as we get to come together as one body, as one faith, as one belief, always to praise and glorify you. It is in Christ's name that we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hallelujah.